I just got back from watching Kingsman, The Golden Circle, and I'm going to do a movie review. But this review is not going to be like any other movie review on YouTube, so stay tuned. And if you haven't seen the movie yet, I have to warn you that there will be spoilers. I repeat, there will be spoilers. And if you decide to leave, come on back after you see the movie. What's up, everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new here, if you're just now joining, my channel is all about mental health, about addiction, about all sorts of stuff. And today I'm gonna to be focusing on Kingsman the Golden Circle, but I'm gonna be talking about some topics when it comes to drugs, the war on drugs, and the state of America right now. Because this movie actually touched on a bunch of those topics, and I don't think many people are gonna be discussing them in this way. So. Just to lay out the plot for you, first we're gonna talk about the villain, Miss Poppy, played by the lovely Julianne Moore. Today marks the beginning of a new age. Wait, I'm gonna show you. Say goodbye to the Kingsmen. So Poppy is a drug lord, all right? Basically, she's in charge of most of the drugs all around the world. And because she is, she has to live in hiding. She lives in a very secluded area, in a place that is not even discovered by the rest of the world. And what she wants to do is do what she does legally. She talks about how she is one of the most successful businesswomen in the world, but nobody even knows who she is because what she does in her business is actually illegal. And she thinks drugs should be legal and people should know how amazing she is. So what she ends up doing is tainting a bunch of the drugs with a killer virus. When you use her drugs, you get this disease that turns your veins blue and that's the first symptom. And then you start getting into this like dance craze, which then leads to paralysis. And then you stop breathing and like your eyes explode and blood starts shooting out all over the place. It's not a good look. So <clears throat> what she does is that she holds the United States or the world rather ransom. Her demands are that unless you sign an executive order that makes these drugs legal and you make me immune to any kind of legal ramifications, all these people are gonna die because I'm the one who has the antidote. Now, this is a topic that I have discussed on this channel and I'll put a link up in the info card above my head. I have talked about the legalization of weed and how I actually voted for recreational marijuana use here in Las Vegas, well, in the state of Nevada. And this is a big deal. When we're talking about the war on drugs, this is a very, very failed war. We are criminalizing, we are locking people up because of their drug use. And while Poppy in this movie, she's just trying to do it to get fame and so people know who she is, this is actually a bigger issue um, with people using drugs. So many of these drugs are non-lethal and things like that. And we've seen from the prohibition days that when things are illegal, more people are actually going to use them. Whereas we could not only reduce the harm that these drugs do, but we could also tax them, it would fuel the economy, as we have seen happen in many, many, many states. So that point of the movie, I think is very, very relevant. And some of these next points are extremely relevant as well, because we're talking about the decriminalization of drugs, which I also did another video about. Um, Oregon is starting to do that more and more. Next, we're gonna talk about the President of the United States. The President of the United States is played by Mr. Bruce Greenwood. So once they get the demands from Poppy and the President talks to her and he's like, okay, we'll meet your demands and all this stuff and he gets off the phone with her, his Vice President's in the room and she's talking about how they can spin this thing and it's not really complying with terrorists and all that stuff. But the President's like, I'm not gonna meet her demands. What are you, crazy? And he starts talking about how he's just gonna let all these drug users die. His idea is these people are doing something illegal, get rid of them all, they all deserve to die, so I'm just gonna make everybody think that I'm going to submit to these demands, but I'm really gonna take my sweet time and let all these people die. And the vice president is all like, what? What are you talking about? These are people, these are actual people. We can't just let them die. And the president's like, well, guess they shouldn't have done drugs in the first place and what they start doing they start rounding all the people who have been infected by this virus up and they put them in this big football stadium and they're all locked in these cages basically just waiting to die 
Later, we find out his vice president was actually a recreational drug user. And she is in the Oval Office when she starts to get the blue veins and showing the first symptoms of being infected by this virus. And that's when she makes a plea to him like, hey, we gotta get the antidote from Poppy or I'm gonna die. And the president basically sits back and he's like, well, guess you should have known better. And she ends up getting shuttled off to one of these football stadiums where they're keeping everybody. Now, this is some real stuff that we need to talk about right now. This is the narrative that a lot of people have is that drug users should die they're a drain on the economy and we're looking at them as things and a lot of people think that they should just die off i've even seen hateful comments talking about natural selection and oftentimes when i do these videos i talk about how these are mothers these are fathers these are sons these are daughters these are friends these are colleagues these are so many different people one point that the vice president brings up to the president when he's saying this to her is like i work for you 20 hours a day and maybe some people can do that without a chemical but i need that just to keep my mind right and this is a whole nother topic but it's true a lot of people turn to drugs and alcohol because of the stresses they endure at work and the president being mr goody two shoes thinks that these people should die in reality, most people use drugs recreationally, but if you check out my videos about the actual disease of addiction and how this works, some people are genetically predisposed to addiction. Everybody tries drugs. Most everybody tries drugs, but some people are prone to becoming addicted. Now, I hate to say this, and I will anyways, when watching this, I couldn't help but wonder, like this made a very good point. I couldn't help to wonder is, is this what our current president is actually doing? If you've been keeping up with my channel or you've been keeping up with the news when President Trump is talking about the opioid epidemic or Jeff Sessions talking about what we're doing to eradicate this thing, we have to look and see what are they actually doing? Now I did do a video uh, about a week or two ago about things that they're moving forward, but an update on the president declaring a national emergency when it comes to the opioid epidemic, he said this publicly. He said that this is a national emergency, but saying that doesn't really do anything. Updates have shown us that the president hasn't actually signed into anything, any official documents that we are declaring a national emergency. What this means is, is that when there is a national emergency, a lot of funds are allocated towards fighting this epidemic and President Trump actually hasn't done that yet. So as I'm watching this movie, I have to question, is President Trump actually doing something like this? Is he actually just trying to make himself look better to get his approval ratings up? Or does he actually have a plan of action? Is he actually going to sign this in a document that this is a national emergency? Or is he willing to just let these people die? Because th if they die, they're not gonna be able to vote for him in four years anyways. Just something to think about. Only time will tell on that one. Lastly, I'm going to talk about whiskey. Whiskey is one of the statesmen. That's part of the plot. Kingsman gets blown up. The statesmen are their American cousins. And Whiskey is like their main dude. And we come to find out that Whiskey actually is a traitor. And after he gets shot in the head and brought back to life and he's shown a picture to jog his memory back, clearly he lost somebody close to him. A woman, wife, girlfriend, fiance, what is it? Well, we come to find out that the reason why Whiskey actually slapped the antidote out of Eggsy's hand is because his wife was pregnant with their child and she was killed at a convenience store robbery by two meth heads. So he has a personal grudge against people who use drugs and he wanted all of these drug users to die because of this personal vendetta that he has. This is very real. I remember on countless occasions, people have asked me, Chris, how are you so compassionate to these people who hate drug addicts, who hate drug users? How are you so compassionate towards them? Because I know for a fact that many of them have been hurt by drug users in the past in some way, shape, or form. Me, I'm a prime example. My mom was an alcoholic my whole life. Um, she's coming up on 12 years sober, but for 20 years, I was raised by an alcoholic mom. Alcohol, the disease of addiction, it screwed me up as a kid. It actually led to my addiction. So I was directly affected by an addict. 
So I have to show compassion to these people who have so much anger or hatred inside of them towards addicts because I know that most of them, in some way, they have been affected by drugs. Maybe it was a, a cousin who stole from their family member. Maybe it was their brother. Maybe it was their sister. A lot of them have parents. Maybe it was a situation like this where a drug addict killed or robbed somebody that they loved and now they have this deep rooted resentment towards them so that's something else that we need to talk about so i'm really glad that i got to do a movie review about kingsman because i love kingsman i'm a i'm a big action fan it was a great movie if you haven't seen it yet go see it i think it was better than the first one but i want to do more videos like this where i bring up these underlying topics when it comes to mental health, when it comes to addiction, when it comes to drugs, when it comes to alcohol. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave comments down below, I'll definitely do more of them. So again, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I'm always doing videos about this and mental health and addiction. So right below this little box, click that round little subscribe button. Make sure you hit the little notification bell so you're always the first to know when I'm making new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.